first African-American female and Democrat. Yes. Any publications that you're aware of that ever acknowledged that fact? I was never celebrated or congratulated. Uh, the first, when, on my day of swearing in, I was sworn in by Judge Emerson. I received my first JQC complaint. Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today we're going to give you an update on Douglas County Probate Judge Christina Peterson because it is official. The recommendation of the lower court has been approved by the Georgia Supreme Court, and this first ever black woman to be a probate judge in this particular position has now been officially removed from the bench and barred from being a judge in this area for seven years. And by the way, this is after she already lost her re-election campaign so they did this to her in the lame duck session which really goes to show you how completely incompetent this woman actually is now we're going to get into this but before we do i want to thank everybody who supports this channel via actualjusticewarrior.com slash join oh, give me the money give you give me the money Okay. The state Supreme Court issued its ruling in the case of embattled probate judge Christine Peterson. The high court ruled the Douglas County probate judge should be removed from office immediately. So quick recap for those of you who don't remember this story, although I have an entire video on this, a link in the description of this video. So Christina Peterson, she won a position as a probate judge in Douglas County, Georgia, and she was the first ever black female to ever get this judgeship. Now, of course, after winning her election, she immediately immediately got herself into controversy. As judge-elect, she ended up putting out Cash App links on her official page asking for donations, and this was one of the many violations that she had as a woman of the bench when she was not even sworn into office yet. But to make matters worse, she also immediately started claiming racism. There was evil white racism afoot, and that was the reason why she was only making about $90,000, even though that was the salary of the position when she took office and it didn't make any sense for her to know the salary while running for that position and then demand an additional stipend. Newly elected judge in Douglas County is making waves even before taking office. She wants a big raise. Probate judge elect Christina Peterson says that she should be paid nearly twice as much as her predecessor because unlike him, she's an attorney. But Fox 5 I-Team reporter Randy Travis discovered her duties likely won't change very much. Now, to be fair to Peterson, she actually made an okay argument. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but she made an okay argument that the previous person in this position wasn't even actually a lawyer, so she had more experience, allegedly. I mean, this will come into play later. Therefore, she deserves a higher increase in payment. And unfortunately, the board that approves payments in this scenario ended up approving about a thirty dollars or $40,000 pay increase. Increase. Now, this was ridiculous for a number of reasons. First and foremost, what does a probate judge do? They end up doing marriage licenses, birth certificates, death records, wills, and basically things that are not all that serious. Secondly, and this is absolutely crucial, they have incredibly tiny caseloads. Superior Court Chief Judge David Emerson fired off this letter to commissioners, pointing out the probate judge handled far fewer cases than any other court last year. Most of them the simple task of filing unchallenged wills. If someone wanted a jury trial to dispute a will, they could always appeal to a state or superior court judge. How many times did someone demand a jury trial in probate court last year? There were zero appeals from probate court to the state court. We're talking about 600 cases a year. This is not large when compared to the other judges that she was comparing her salary to, some of which will have caseloads of about 10,000 cases a year, but most of them would be significantly more than hers, well over double, and thus it made sense for them to get higher pay than her for the services. On top of that, Douglas County actually had a rule where you get fees when you file the will and all that, and the judge is allowed to keep those fees. So the previous person in this position was actually keeping about half of the fees of, I believe, birth certificates, or maybe it was will fees, I don't remember, but it was one category, and then he would donate the rest of the fees to the treasury. Well, it turns out, 
through the pay increase that she received and through her keeping all of the fees that she received, she was actually now doing a very tiny caseload that you don't even need a real lawyer to go over the highest paid judge in the state of Georgia. She actually made more money than the chief justice of the Georgia Supreme Court. Another hearing officer, Richard Hyde, suggested some of the criticism against Peterson could involve the fact that, unlike her predecessor, she chose to keep all birth and death certificate fees in addition to her salary. She was asked how much in outside fees she's pocketed so far since she took office. Is it over 400000 I don't, I don't know. Are you looking for the answer? No, I'm just trying to understand. Like, I would have prepared that if I would have known that I was in my charge with some type. I get to ask questions. Okay. Thank you. She never answered the question, but according to county payroll records we reviewed, Judge Peterson kept all $140,000 in fees each year for 2021 and 2022. Judges rarely do that in Georgia, but it is legal. That pushed her total compensation to $265,000 a year. And by the way, she also made more than the governor as well. So we have a scenario where this woman comes into office. She ends up demanding a pay increase that the position does not entail. She claims it's evil white racism not to give her that pay increase they end up giving it to her and then you have this lowly probate judge who again does very non-serious cases with no criminal implications or at least there shouldn't be any criminal implications and she ends up being the highest paid judge in the state paid more than the governor and it's absolutely absurd we're talking about over a quarter of a million dollar salary for this woman to do 600 cases that again you don't even need a real attorney to go over but the crazy thing is is that it doesn't stop there because she wasn't even showing up to work she would push for continuances she would do delays all kinds of crazy things to avoid doing her very tiny job all while hiding behind the veneer of oh everybody who says anything to me is an evil white racist she once hit a panic button when a deputy was late escorting her to court, causing a temporary panic among security. And when county staff criticized her actions, it quickly triggers allegations of obstructionism or even racism. These communications and actions reveal a judge who publicly vilifies colleagues, is quick to threaten them with unnecessary legal action, and generally projects a spiteful and vainglorious persona. I'm the first African-American female and Democrat. Yes. I was never celebrated or congratulated. I, the first, when, on my day of swearing in, I was sworn in by Judge Emerson. I received my first JQC complaint. But that's not even the worst of it. That isn't even the most awful thing that this judge did. Not by a long shot. For instance, there was a scandal where she asked to have the courthouse open for people to hold a wedding there. She was denied by the sheriff because the security protocols would be too crazy. And rather than taking the sheriff's word for it, what she ended up doing was allowing everybody in the courtroom with no security at all whatsoever. And considering this is connected to the criminal court, this could have led to a situation where a dangerous person was able to get a hold of a weapon or something that resembles a weapon that was left behind there by one of her many guests. Again, a standard abuse of power that was ridiculous for her to do, despite the fact that she had expressed warnings from the sheriff not to do so. But again, it gets much, much worse because there was actually a case that got a lot of attention. This is what really shine the spotlight on her even beyond her asking for money in an illegal way when she is a judge holding public office or at least a judge elect through cash app i just don't have a memory of my dad i don't know who he is these are the first public comments from pj skelton the henry county woman thrown in jail by probate judge christina peterson in 2021 skelton had written her uncle's name on the original 2016 marriage certificate where it asked for her father because her uncle is the one who raised her it's really sensitive to talk about him or how I grow up. But she testified when her Thai mother applied for a green card, Skelton dug up her birth certificate and read her birth father's name. She filed paperwork to change her marriage license just in case it was an issue. And that was when a woman showed up to court in order to change the marriage license that she had with her husband from the man that she previously thought was her father to the man that she then found out was her father. And the judge decided to put her in jail over this. Instead, Peterson told her to come to court then ordered her jail 48 hours and fined $500 for contempt. Did you go to this hearing um, with any idea that you may be going to jail? No. 
She said this Peterson never told her attorney. she might need an attorney in court, okay. a fact that seemed particularly troubling for JQC hearing panel member Robert McBurney. Did she say that, that you could go get one if you needed one, or she just asked if one was with you? Jesus, Ali, one was with me. And when I say put her in jail over this, I really mean put her in jail over something even more crazy than this, because it turns out this Asian woman was married to a black guy. Now, by the way, amending your marriage license is not that serious. I just want you guys to understand that. But this judge, being a strong black woman, likely did not like that this woman took a black man off the market. So part of the reason why she went out of her way to order this woman into the courtroom, not inform her of any kind of criminal penalty against her, and then hold her in contempt was because she found out she was married to a black guy because, again, this is not a standard protocol. In fact, this is one of the things that led to the investigation that ended up ruling she was guilty of systemic incompetence, despite the fact that, again, she demanded a pay increase, an increase in stipend, because she was more qualified than her predecessor. So, she went on trial for this. We showed you some of the highlights of it. And essentially, her defense was that she was a black woman and that she wasn't celebrating enough as the first black woman Democrat in her position, and honestly, everyone is an evil white racist, and the court ended up rebuking her in an absolutely scathing way. State high court decision follows a recommendation by the Judicial Qualification Commission to remove Peterson. It found she violated 28 of 30 counts against her. The Fox 5 I team has detailed many of the missteps, including asking the public to cash app her birthday gifts on social media. So essentially in court documents, they said that this woman has no idea how to be a judge. She's lazy. She doesn't work. She's petty and disgusting, not just against that Asian woman that she ended up throwing in jail for two days for again, trying to amend her marriage license to make it more accurate. But they also said that she likes to play the race card as her defense. She likes to deflect all responsibility and accountability. And it is for that reason that she never took accountability for any of her actions that they decided to rule that she was guilty of systemic incompetence. And like I said, the Georgia Supreme Court has doubled up on this verdict. The Georgia Supreme Court completely agrees and she has been removed from office. And by the way... Unrelated to this, there was also an additional scandal of her being arrested and charged with a felony for assaulting a police officer in a nightclub in a situation where she claims she was defending a woman from a man, but the body cam footage does not look like it aids her claim in any way, shape, or form. And by the way, I actually held off on covering this for a while, and I'll still wait until more information comes out, because during the course of the news segments about this, multiple different witnesses actually did back up her account. Now look, unlike this judge, I actually have a good temperament about me. So I am willing to reserve judgment on the felony charges that she faces in the city of Atlanta in relation to this and the fact that she's begging Fonnie Willis, the district attorney, to go soft on her because, you know, who knows, maybe evidence will come out that shows that she's all in the clear. And honestly, I don't need her to be a literal felon that committed a violent crime and assaulted a police officer to know that this woman should be nowhere near a court unless she's the defendant ever again. I mean, really, how badly do you have to mess up to get systemic incompetence convictions basically or ruling against you when all you were supposed to do was wills and birth certificates and marriage licenses again to be a probate judge in douglas county because the caseload is so low because it's so simple you didn't even actually have to be an attorney in order to hold that office it was a regular standard elected position the judgeship was basically a judgeship in name only you didn't have to do anything except read some documents charge the appropriate fees and rubber stamp stuff and somehow this woman managed to spiral this into such a disaster that she cannot be a judge for seven years. The probate judge is on judge probation because she was so horrible at her job. And again, this is what happens when you hire somebody based on her qualifications being her skin color and her sex. In reality, this woman was nowhere near qualified. She did not have the temperament. She was a petty tyrant, and she acted like that in every opportunity. She was insanely corrupt, basically like the super mayor of judges, if we're being perfectly honest. And in reality, people should have been able to see this coming immediately based on the campaign that she run and based on everything that she did in her life leading up to this point. 
But I will give credit to the voters of Douglas County because even though she has been removed due to systemic incompetence and all of that, like I said, given the opportunity to vote against her, they voted against her. So even if none of this would have happened, even if she would have not held accountable by the Georgia Supreme Court, they decided that it was a moot point. The reason they would have decided that is because she was already voted out during the primary. But here we have a woman, a diversity hire, somebody who wanted to be celebrated for being the first black woman Democrat to ever hold this petty probate judge position being thrown out on her ass where she belongs being thrown in jail by the Atlanta police where maybe she belongs we'll see how that case is adjudicated and I think we're all the better for it in terms of society I give credit where credit is due to the state of Georgia for actually regulating on this particular woman for actually having standards and not letting her skate by based on her skin color based on her sex because we cannot have a society that substitutes that for qualifications and we cannot have a society that allows people to weaponize that in order to get themselves out of trouble in too many places in this country that ends up working and i'm happy to say at least in the state of georgia at least in this one moment it has not worked it has failed but you know what those are just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think of this judge? Is she the greatest judge in the history of ever? And do you believe that she actually genuinely deserved to be paid more than the Georgia Supreme Court Chief Justice, more than the governor, and become one of the highest paid public officials in the entire state of Georgia, despite the fact that she was doing stuff that didn't even require a law degree to do because it was so simple? Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video shown by leaving a like, subscribe for more content follow me on the social medias support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about this judge being done for till next time